summer is here and that means festival time arts festival music festival you name it there's a festival for it we've already had the brighton festival this year which has had many fantastic productions go on and a lot of decent street performances done but the one that everyone really clamours to see and really wants to be a part of is the Edinburgh Festival. And this year at the Edinburgh Festival there's a brand new play going on. Very much a fashionable type of play this in this current climate. It's a biographical play and it's called Morecambe. It's based on the life and the growing up of Eric Morecambe who would later on become famous for his work as part of the comedy duo. Uh, Morecambe and Wise. Uh, he's not. This character is not a stranger to being portrayed uh, or having his comedy portrayed in plays. Um, in 2001, there was a West End show called The Play What I Wrote, which paid tribute to the duo, but and had a different celebrity every night as their special guest. Whilst Morecambe, Eric Morecambe and Ernie Wise were not actually characters within the play. It was based on their comedy and the type of uh, double act that they had. So why do you think that Eric Morecambe deserves a play to have be written about him? Do you think he deserves a play to be written about him? I believe Eric Morecambe does deserve to have a play written about him, or at least a TV special, a TV play very much in the light of the season that was on Channel 4 last, on BBC 4 last year, sorry, not Channel 4, BBC 4, looking at entertainers of the past uh, 40 years. Um, why do I think Eric Morecambe deserves a play, or even a TV play, is because of his, he represents, and he and Ernie Wise represented the last of the real variety stars who would make it big on BBC television. They were two men who constantly went out and tried to make their act better and bigger and worked for many, many years before they even got to the pinnacle that everyone seems to remember, watching their Christmas specials in the 70s. And they seem to be synonymous now with British Christmas time and British comedy. People still refer to some of their famous, famous routines and some of their infamous little nuances. I mean, Morecambe, Eric Morecambe was fantastic. Some of the things that I used to love watching him do on the programme was he would get out a paper bag, pretend he'd thrown something in the air, and it would suddenly drop into the paper bag. It was a small little sleight of hand trick, but it just made me laugh. But in, is this show not in danger of just becoming a glorified impersonation of a person? Is the play focusing on the material that he wrote, that he co-wrote with um, Ernie Wise? No. The play is actually focusing on his life from the age of 10 onwards. And is it interesting? I, well, I, I personally find the, the story interesting. And Eric Morecambe, before he was famous, um, uh, during the war, he was a Bevin boy, one of those young men who was too young to go into the army, couldn't be in the Home Guard, so he was sent down the coal mines. And that is what eventually led to his earlier death than he should have been, his heart condition and his lung condition. Um, so there's something there. And the fact that he would constantly go out there with his partner and, and perform, mm. I, there is a lot there to look at. I mean, is this uh, has this play been written, do you think, um, with the idea in mind that such biographical pieces are on vogue at the moment. We've had the series on BBC4 featuring um, uh, portrayals of, of, of people like Frankie Howard and Kenneth Williams. Is this not just an extension of that? Is this someone just getting in on a good idea? Or do you think there's real earnestness in making this? I, I think that you've got a very good point there anyone who is of great interest to the general public at the moment well not at the moment anyone who's of great general interest to the public is going to probably get a play because you look at the the curse of steptoe the play that they had on bbc channel 4 uh it last year about harry h corbett 
featuring Jason, Jason Isaacs gained the channel its highest ever viewing figures. I mean, that there shows that there is a market for this sort of play. There is a market for people to see this sort of thing. And taking it to Edinburgh is a genius, a genius idea because if it doesn't get picked up for the West End, they may pick up the script for another set of plays. But why in a play format? Why not just read a book about him? Why not just read a biography about him? I think the reason why people want to see it or would want to see it is perhaps to relive a little bit of the magic that he brought to his act. I mean, this is... I personally am not sure whether anyone could pretend or act to be Eric Morecambe and pull it off. But that's not to say there isn't someone out there with the talent to actually do it. I mean, the person... Uh, there was the um, the play Just Like That in 2003, the play about Tommy Cooper. Tommy Cooper was a legend. He was irreplaceable. But um, Jerome from Robson and Jerome, who played him in that tour and on the West End, got fantastic notices for his performance as Tommy Cooper and pulled it off really well. Mm. What it could lead to is it could lead to younger generations looking at the work of Morecambe and Wise in more depth than just the clips that we see at Christmas and using their ideas and their old school ways to perhaps look at the way they create comedy. I, I don't think that it's going to make anyone want to be like Eric Morecambe, but it is going to evoke memories and it is going to reflect on the way people look at today's comedy and double acts. Would Edinburgh be the best place to debut this sort of work, though? Or would it have worked better sending a script into the BBC, hoping that they would turn it into a TV film? The BBC, so far, hasn't made any hasn't made any reference to doing another series of plays regarding their former stars. Well, they are doing one-off, specifically um, Amy Blyton is someone that is going to be portrayed by mm. Helena Bonham Carter quite recent, uh, quite... Um, yes. ...in the near future. I understand that, but I mean, like, we saw with the Frankie Howard one, the Tony Hancock and the Kenneth Williams Fantabulosa. Don't forget the Fantabulosa, which was the one that kicked off this whole fad, really, um was was portrayed by Michael Sheen very famously and it was a massive success on TV but it was also on the stage before it came on to the TV so what I'm saying here is that it, it could be the platform to get it as a TV script right. personally I think that also Eric Morecambe lived off of when he performed his pieces lived off of the energy of the audience I mean, he could just turn to the audience, flick his glasses up and have them in stitches. You need that live energy to really get the best of him. I don't think the TV version without a live audience would really get the energy going for the actor to be able to pull it off. And in terms of production value for this play, is it being done um, as, a, as a homage to him? Is it being done by fans of his? Is this going to upset the portrayal of him because we have to look at who is writing this play and who is producing this play to see how Eric Morecambe will come off in this piece how people will um, form their opinions about him based on how people portray him well uh, William Cook who wrote the books Eric Morecambe uh, Unseen and Morecambe and Wise Untold um, has been working quite in depth with Tim Whit Whitnell, who who really is um is the guy who who wanted to write this play, and he wanted to write it because he read uh, a passage from a letter that an emotional uh, Eric sent to his mother at the age of twenty one about how things were going in his career. I mean, is it an unbiased portrayal? I don't think it's unbiased, but I also think that whilst Eric and Ernie are beloved. There's one reason for that. They've never really done anything bad. They were two family men. The only thing that ever happened with Eric Moore.